Hey everybody, this is Peter Reed Miller from On Sports Photography with Peter Reed Miller. Today I'm going to give you some tips for swimming. Shooting swimming, that is. I'm not going to swim. I'm not going to appear in a Speedo. Today I'm going to talk about swimming, shooting swimming. Uh, but before I start, I'd just like a little reminder. Uh, you're on the page, you're enjoying the material we're presenting for you, you're hopefully learning something. Go ahead and subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. We're not, we don't get your email. We're not going to deluge you with stuff. Just do it. It helps us with YouTube and it helps us with the feeling that you're out there and you're getting something out of this. Okay, swimming, tip number 10. Get there early. Look around. Every pool is different, indoors, outdoors. I know I'm going to tell you the basically the normal way to shoot each of these strokes, but the fact of the matter is there's always a little angle, a little place that a certain swimming pool might have that you could shoot from that would make a different picture. And believe me, in swimming, a different picture is hard to come by. Tip nine, when you get there, find those heat sheets. Those are going to be big lists. Most swim meets proceed with a set of heats going down to a set of secondary heats going down to finals, A, B, and C finals. You want to pick out your swimmers that you have already researched and find out what heat they're in and what lane they're in. You don't want to just shoot these people swimming randomly. You want to be targeted on certain swimmers. Look at the heat sheets. There's a lot of information in there. Heat sheets are usually ready very soon after the opening of the pool. If they're not there, there's an office that's preparing them. Um, I'm going to say this about swimming, track and field, gymnastics. The people who work those sports are mostly former athletes in those sports or parents of athletes in those sports. They are very helpful. They want to help you. They want the best possible coverage for their sport. So if you go ask and they'll say, hey, we'll have them in a half hour or we'll, we're just starting the copying machine now, you'll get them. So you get to the meet, you've checked out the pool, you've got your heat sheets. Tip number eight, you are thinking that this is pretty easy. You're close, you're right at the pool deck, you're right at the edge, you can shoot with a short lens, but you have to remember, you're not shooting full bodies. You're shooting faces, hands, arms, that's it. So really, you need a long lens. Even in a 50 meter pool, uh, a 600, even an 800, at least a 400. You've got to get tight in on, on what you see, which is a head popping out of the water or a head turning. So think about long lenses and think about your angles and your composition. Tip number seven. You're going to shoot a lot of pictures during, a, say, a weekend swim meet of a lot of young men and women in suits and they're going to look a lot the same. One of the keys, if your camera has the capability, is to do sound tags. Usually on the more advanced uh, pro cameras, there's a button you can push and you can say, Ryan Lochte, lane six, black gator's cap, right by that frame, boom. So when you're going through that stuff on Sunday night and you want to know where's Ryan Lochte, you know, who is that guy? Well, look, there'll be a little icon. You hit it, the sound tag tells you. This is also great. Uh, we developed it uh, when I worked at Sports Illustrated because the people who edited my film were never at the meet or my images. So it's great for that, too. Tip number six, low and high. Low means wet. Uh, you're going to shoot a couple of these strokes from, if you can, being on your belly on the pool deck. You want to lie on a towel, but you're still going to get splashed. Uh, other strokes, you're going to be standing up or even up in the stand shooting down. But think about it when you do, do the low shoots about what's going to happen to your camera. Do you have a fairly waterproof, water-sealed camera? Or should you consider taking some sort of protective water cover, a rain cover, something like that? Because low means wet. Tip number five. 
shooting the freestyle. The freestyle is not a tremendously exciting stroke, but uh, the picture, the standard picture is from above, at least standing on the pool deck from the side with the swimmer slightly ahead of you. So you're looking right down into the face turned back, the arm coming over. Now, you gotta hope, you gotta, you gotta know a couple of things. Where, which way do they breathe, first thing? How often do they breathe? They breathe every stroke, every other stroke. Some people will breathe one side, then the other. So you got it. This is why the heats are great. This is how you learn this. Um, you're going to hope they're wearing goggles. And you're going to hope the goggles are some crazy color that reflect off the sky, because that makes the picture. And you're going to hope that you're not looking at too many fillings in their mouth, because you're going to be looking right down their throat. Uh, this is pretty much the shot for freestyle. And uh, you know, there's variations, but that's, and you can actually walk along the side of the pool and, and keep shooting each time they make a stroke, assuming that you have uh, a clearance and, and, the, and about room to do that. But that's shooting freestyle. Tip number four, shooting the breaststroke. The breaststroke can be very cool. You get that face coming up, you get that, you can get that bubble, you get the arms, the hands coming out. That's all you have with the breaststroke. Everything else happens underwater. You have to be very careful, though, about the splash. The water that splashes in front of the swimmer, which is, always happens in breaststroke, will potentially draw your camera's autofocus off the face, boom, onto the water. You got to be careful about this. Uh, one of the things that you can do um, in, if you have an adjustable autofocus is, um, in Canon's case, it's case two. Case two means that the camera stays on the subject, does not jump around. Uh, there's other ways to set it on other cameras, but I think that's a big argument for case two. But case two is good for that, but it's not good for something like a start because it doesn't grab things quickly. It just holds on to them. So case two, breaststroke, look for the bubble, watch out for the splash. Tip three, the backstroke. This is a tough one. Uh, not, never seen too many really great backstroke pictures, unless you're directly above in the catwalks or something. Uh, if you stand at the end, and when, when they do the turn, if you can shoot them when they're still underwater, you'll see bubbles streaming out, and that's kind of a cool picture. But once they start to actually stroke, you're kind of looking at an arm in the air and maybe a face, and that's, that's really what you're going to get there, unless, as I said, you can get super high, like maybe at the 10 meter diving platform at the end of the pool, something like that. That's basically your backstroke. So yeah, the backstroke, a little dry, but if you want to get out of your comfort zone, try going to the side, slowing down your shutter speed, get that arm arcing through, get the water coming off the arm. You really got to get creative. You got to work hard to make a backstroke picture that isn't boring. But when you do, you really have something nice, so it's worth the effort. Tip number two, shooting the butterfly. This is probably the most photogenic and most often photographed stroke in competitive swimming. There's a lot of little nuances, though. Breathing, again, some swimmers breathe straight ahead. Some turn to the side, so you never really see their face. Some swimmers bring their arms completely out of the water. Some of them, like Michael Phelps, never do. And it's a weird composition. If you're shooting something very wide, not very tall. But again, low, get low, get wet. Same thing for the last tip, the breaststroke. Get on your belly on, on the pool deck, let them come right at you and just bang away. Again, be aware of the splash. It can happen there. But you really have to know your swimmers. You have to know how they're going to breathe, how they're going to, how they're going to stroke. But you can make some great, great butterfly pictures. Tip number one, the react shot. So you've shot your swimmers, and they really, no matter what you do, they're all starting to look a little bit the same. There's not much personality. Even if you see a face, it's a face that's really stressed and effort, full of effort. Tip number one, the react shot. Now you're shooting your meat. You've got tons of pictures of swimmers. They're kind of starting to look the same. You're not seeing faces. You're seeing faces, but you're not seeing expressions. Here's where you get the real stuff. Here's where you get the personality. At the end of the race, every swimmer 
grabs the pool edge and turns right to the scoreboard. And the winner usually really goes crazy. Now this doesn't work in the heats because they kind of don't care. But they want to see their time. They want to see if they won, number one. They want to see their time. So someone who didn't even win the race but just set a personal best could also react. So you need to be between the swimmers and the scoreboard. So they look right at you. You need to be essentially under the scoreboard. They're going to look right at you. Now you've got to really work at picking who your winner is going to be because that react is very instant. But if you pick it right and you get somebody, they'll go crazy sometimes. And that's what is the fun picture in swimming. That's what's the real picture that doesn't look like all the other pictures you've taken. So that's uh, my tips on swimming. Enjoy. Stay dry. One last thought to leave you with about swimming. We've talked about all the strokes. We've talked about everything that you, you have to do. But you need to go beyond that. You need to get creative. There's something out there. You can put a remote under the starting block. Um, I would lay down on the 50 meter freestyle where there's no pictures in the water. I would lay down um, at the edge of the pool and hold my camera out to get the, the start dive. Um, there's a whole technology of underwater cameras, which I personally don't do, but that, that's, those are options. Uh, you know, you got to push the envelope here, because otherwise you're going to have what everybody else is going to have, and it's not going to be that exciting. So always look for another angle, look for another way, look for a place to put a remote. Think about that. Stay creative. So that wraps up our top 10 list for swimming. Uh, yet again, I want to remind you, if you enjoyed this, subscribe. It'll help us out, and it will not cost you a thing, and we, you will not get deluged with emails. So subscribe, enjoy, learn, and stay dry.